In this video, we're going to apply Kirchhoff's laws to solve circuit problems involving not parallel compound circuits. So a compound circuit has both a parallel aspect to it and a series aspect to it. So we're really going to have to use our Kirchhoff's laws and Ohm's law to figure these ones out. So let's just remind ourselves what are our Kirchhoff's laws. So the first one, the first law says the current into, this is called the junction, when current splits, current into the junction is equal to the current out of the junction. So 15 is equal to 5 plus 10. The second law says the sum of the voltage around any closed loop is 0. Meaning I pick up 14, we were talking about in class, 14 pretzels or 14 joules per coulomb at the battery. By the time I get back to the battery, I need to have none of those 14 joules left over. It's one way of thinking about it. So I can drop off 7 here and 7 here. One other option could be 10 here and 4 here. So we're going to use those two laws plus Ohm's law, which says for an ohmic material, V is equal to IR, to figure out these problems. So whenever you see you have two variables, we can always use Ohm's law to find the third. So V is equal to I times R, voltage is current would be 1 amp, and resistance would be 2 ohms. So we know our voltage is going to be 2 volts. We can do the same process for this and find 6 volts. Okay. So now we're a little stuck. We can, can't use Ohm's law anymore because we need to know two of the variables to find the third. So we need to look at the first law, which has to do with current, and the second law has to do with voltage. So let's pick one. Well, the first law has to do with current. The current into a junction is equal to the current out of a junction. So let's see if we can visualize what's happening. R3 has three amps. R1 has one amp. So if we look here, we can visualize the current flowing in this direction, or we can visualize the current going in this direction. It's not going to make a difference. But what the first law is saying is the current through this third one, here's a junction, right? So the current is split. Some of the current is going to go this way, and some of the current is going to go this way. So the current through the third one is equal to the current through the first one plus the current through the second one. So here I have 3, and the top I have 1 amp, so we can find what the current going through the second one is. So the current going through the second must, must be 3 minus 2, or 3 minus 1, which is 2 amps. Okay, so we found something about that. Hmm, is there any other information we can find? Well, let's look at the second law. Second law says the voltage in any closed loop has the sum to give me zero. Let's see what this says. The sum of the voltage around any closed loop is zero. So 14 at the battery, and then the two numbers would have to add to give me 14. So let's look here. Well, let's draw a closed loop. So let's see what information we have. We know something about the voltage through one. We know something about the voltage through 3. So let's try to use, utilize that. I know the voltage through 1 is 2 volts. And I know the voltage across 3 is 6 volts. So let's, let's draw a closed path or a closed loop. And I'd want to draw a closed loop that goes through both of those resistors. So here we go. Okay, now instead of going down, I'm going to go up. And I've got to make it back to the battery. So this is a closed loop. So the voltage of the battery has got to be equal to the, the addition of the voltage 
through all the resistors in that closed loop. Well, there's only these two resistors in the closed loop. So I know from the second law that my total voltage has to be the voltage through 3 plus the voltage through 1. Voltage through 3 and the voltage through 1. I, you could say the same thing about this closed loop. That's a closed loop. So I could say the, vo the total voltage has got to be the voltage through 3 plus, look through this path, the voltage through 2. That would be true as well. But let's look at our first loop here. The, the total voltage, the voltage through 3 is 6 volts. And the voltage through 1 is 2 volts. So my total voltage has got to be 8 volts. Okay, so I have 8 volts right here. Now I can look at my second loop. The total voltage, well, we just found that's 8 volts. The voltage through 3, well, we know that's 6 volts, so we can find the voltage through 2. Doing the math there, 8 minus 6 would give you 2 volts. So if you look in parallel, this is going to be 2 volts and this is going to be 2 volts as well. Okay, what else can we find? Well, using Ohm's law, V is equal to I times R. I'm not going to show the calculation, but this would be 1 times 2 gives me 2. Now let's try to figure out, we're almost done, we just got to figure something about these two. So we could, you guys know how to add resist resistances in compound circuits. What I could do to find that is add these two in parallel first, and then the result of that add to R3 in series, and that would give me my total resistance. But sometimes it's easier to use Kirchhoff's laws to figure it out, out unknowns. So if I wanted to find something about the voltage, I would use the second law. If I want to figure out something about the current, I would use the first law. So just to refresh here, the first law says the current into a junction is equal to the current out of a junction. So let's see if I can apply that. Well, let's see what's happening. What do I know? Okay, there's three amps that goes through here, then one amp that must go this way, and we found out through this one, there's two amps. Then those two would meet back up again, and then go through the battery. Now this is going to help me. Three amps. Again, when we think of current, think of cars. So this is saying there's three cars per second that are going through this resistor. Well, there's three amps that are going through this resistor. I would argue that well, just as many cars that pass the battery must also pass R3. That's, there's only one path here. So if I have three cars go through R3, well, I must have had all three of those cars go through the, the total voltage as well. So my total current must be 3 amps as well. Now you can use V is equal to IR to figure out what your total resistance is. V is equal to IR. You've got 8 volts is equal to 3 amps times this resistance. So you can leave it as a fraction. Let's look at one more problem. Here it's a compound circuit. We've got these two in parallel or in series with one another and then both of those combine in parallel with R3. So right off the bat I see, okay, I can apply my three tools here are Ohm's law, my first law, my second law. First law has to do with current, my second law has to do with voltage, and this is V is equal to IR. So right off the bat I can say V is equal to I times R, so my voltage has got to be 4 volts. 
What else do I know? Well, this is 4 volts. I know something about the currents in, in both of them. The current through R3 is going to be 4 amps. The current through R1 is 2 amps. Okay, so current thing cars. If I have two cars passing through this one, well, all those cars must pass through R2 as well. So if this is 2 amps, this must be 2 amps as well. Okay, let's apply Ohm's law. B is equal to I times R, so this is going to be 8 volts. Okay, now let's look. Maybe I can apply one of these two laws. Okay, the first law talks about current. So I've got 2 amps that are going through this one, and then again, 2 amps that are going through this one, and I have 4 amps going through there. So here's the junction. So in this junction, I know the current that goes into the junction must be equal to the current that goes out of the junction. So the current that goes through this path is 2 amps. And the current that goes through this path is 4 amps. So the current into the junction has got to be equal to 2 amps plus 4 amps. So the current that goes into that junction has got to be 6 amps. So I can say right now that that current must be 6 amps. Okay, so now I know something about the current. Maybe I can figure out something about the voltage from the second law. So that law says that the voltage in any closed loop, the sum of the voltages in any closed loop is equal to zero. So let's look. Well, maybe this one will help me. V3. No, I don't know anything about V3. Well, how about V2 and V1? V2 and V1. Okay, the voltage across this resistor is 4 volts. The voltage across this resistor is 8 volts. So if I look at this loop, I can draw any closed loop. The sum of the voltages around that closed loop is 0. Meaning, okay, I picked up, you're visualizing pretzels as joules. Uh, you picked up a certain number of pretzels at the battery. You walk along this path, and I drop off 4 on that resistor and 8 in this resistor, and then I go back. Meaning, my total voltage has to be, you can say it's V1 plus V2. The total voltage is 4 plus 8. So my total voltage must be 12 volts. Well, let's look at a different path. I've chosen that path. Let's look at this path right here. We just said we picked up 12 volts at the battery. So if I'm walking along this path. Well, I picked up 12 pretzels. I've got to drop off all 12 pretzels at this resistor before I go back. It's the only resistor. So that must be 12 as well. So now that I've applied both the first law and the second law, all I need to do to figure out the rest of this problem is apply Ohm's law. V is equal to I times R. I'll let you do the calculations yourself. But 3 times 4 is 12. And 2 times 6 will give me 12. Applying Ohm's law. So again, some of the rest of the problems are difficult, but if you apply Ohm's law, the first law, the second law, and then occasionally if you want to add the resistances to check, um, you'll be able to solve all these problems.